I just went all in on I bonds, also known as Series I savings bonds. I bonds are currently paying 7.12% interest, which is way higher than the 0.55% interest I'm currently getting from my high interest savings account. In this video, I'm first going to give a high level overview of I bonds. Second, I'm going to go over how you can buy I bonds from the US Treasury at treasurydirect.gov. And finally, I'm going to go over my personal game plan for investing in I bonds. All this right after. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Learn to invest like a wolf at your own risk. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Wolves of Investing. My name is Donnie Nguyen and I'm the founder of Wolves of Investing. If you're new, I talk about stocks, SPACs, Bitcoin, options, and anything on my mind related to investing. If you wanna learn how to achieve financial freedom through investing, be sure to click on that subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't yet. And please remember to drop a like on this video if you enjoy it, as it truly helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What are I bonds? I bonds, or formerly called Series I savings bonds, are issued every six months by the US Treasury. The interest consists of two parts. The base interest, which remains fixed for the life of the bond, and the inflation-based interest, which changes every six months based on inflation. The combined interest is called the composite interest. Currently, the base interest is 0%, but because of the recent rise in inflation, the inflation interest is 7.12%. So the composite interest you would receive from I-bonds today is 7.12%. This interest will change in May. And of course, no one can tell the future, so we won't know what it's gonna be until that happens. Interest on an I-bond is paid every six months from the purchase date and added to the principal value. And interest is then earned on the new principal. So the interest does compound semi-annually. What is the maximum you can invest in I-bonds? Each United States citizen with a social security number can invest up to $10,000 per calendar year in I-bonds from treasurydirect.gov. However, you can also buy an additional $5,000 in paper I-bonds per year with your tax return. Talk to your tax advisor or visit treasurydirect.gov for more information. You can also buy I-bonds as gifts for other people, including children. So if you have children, this is something you can consider. The gift will count towards the recipient's annual maximum of $10,000 in electronic bonds and $5,000 in paper bonds via tax return. So you can potentially gift up to $15,000 per person if you have that kind of money and we're feeling generous. What is the minimum holding period for I-bonds? If you buy I-bonds, you must hold them for a minimum of one year. So it doesn't work great for an emergency fund. But if you're pretty sure you don't need the money in the next year, I think that is much better than the 0.55% that most bank savings are paying these days. If for some reason you really need to withdraw the money in the first year, you can contact Treasury Direct from within your account and plead your case. But there's no guarantee that they will allow you to withdraw before 12 months. So that's something you want to consider before investing in I-bonds. The maximum time that you can hold an I-bond is 30 years. Another thing to know is that if you don't hold the I-bond for at least five years, you will lose the last three months of interest. So that's something to consider if you decide to hold the I-bond for less than five years. How low can the composite rate go? Can we lose our principal investment in case there's deflation? In a deflationary environment, the inflation interest rate of the I-bond can go negative, but the composite interest is capped at zero. So there's no way we can lose our principal investment in an I-bond unless the US Treasury stops paying its debts. The US Treasury has a track record of paying back its debts for over 200 years. 
So in my opinion, this is not something worth worrying about. So now that you know what I-bonds are, how do you actually buy them? First, you need to open an account with Treasury Direct at treasurydirect.gov. This is the official site from the US government. If you go through any site other than treasurydirect.gov, it could be a scam. So make sure you're at treasurydirect.gov. You're gonna need your tax ID number, which is your social security number or your EIN. You'll need your email address. You'll need your bank account and routing number in order to fund your account. In addition to your password and other account security, you will be required to select three security questions. Even though there are 10 security questions, you only need to choose three. It's really important that you remember your three security questions because you may get locked out of your account if you answer these three questions wrong. I actually got locked out of my account when I answered the questions incorrectly a number of times. And it was a huge hassle to call and get my account unlocked. I was literally put on hold for about an hour before I could unlock my account. And I needed to answer the three security questions over the phone in order to get it unlocked. So do yourself a favor and remember your three security questions. All right, so after you set up your account, you'll get assigned an account number. From treasurydirect.gov, go to the login page and enter your account number. They will then send you a one-time password to the email address registered to your account. After you enter your one-time password, you'll then get a screen with a keyboard in which you'll have to type in your actual password. And of course, if you're asked for your security questions, you'll have to correctly answer those as well. Now that you're in your Treasury Direct account, simply select Buy Direct. Then select Series I Savings Bonds. Enter the purchase amount that you want to buy. The minimum is $25 and the max, as I mentioned earlier, is $10,000. You can just leave the purchase frequency default alone to buy at the earliest date available, which is usually within one business day. Or you can choose from a variety of purchase options like future date and repeat purchases. Then just click submit and that's it. As you can see from my account, I purchased a total of $10,000 in I-bonds, which is displayed here. What are the risks of I-bonds? First, I-bonds are guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the United States. So if you think that the US Treasury isn't gonna pay up, then that's a risk. It's a super small risk in my opinion, since the US Treasury has over a 200 year track record of paying back its debts. The US Treasury is considered the risk-free rate by professional investors like Warren Buffett. So although it's a risk, it's not something I would lose any sleep over. A second risk is the minimum one year holding period. As I mentioned earlier, barring extreme circumstances, there's no way to withdraw your money in the first 12 months. So if you're gonna need your money in the next 12 months, it's probably not a good idea to buy I-bonds. A third risk is the variable inflation rate that changes every six months. Right now, the composite rate is 7.12%, but there's no way to know for sure what it will be when it changes in May. So that's something to consider. A fourth risk is the three months we lose if we don't hold the I-bonds for at least five years. So we do need to take that into account when calculating our interest. So what is my game plan for investing in I-bonds? As I mentioned earlier, I bought $10,000 worth of I-bonds this year to take advantage of the 7.12%. I personally don't think that inflation is gonna get under control this year, which is why I decided to go all in. In my opinion, as long as an I-bond is paying at least 3% higher than an interest savings account, it's worth considering as an investment. The reason I want it to be 3% higher than my savings account rate is to give myself a margin of safety for the risk of having my money tied up for 12 months, the risk of losing three months of interest if I don't hold the I-bond for at least five years, and the risk of getting a lower interest rate when the I-bond adjusts every six months. Also, the Fed is starting to raise short-term interest rates so I expect my high interest savings account rate to steadily rise over the next 12 months. In terms of holding period, after the first year, 
I would just consider the I bond as part of my emergency fund, since I'll be able to freely withdraw it by then. I hope to hold it for at least five years so that I don't have to take the three month interest penalty. And I could potentially hold it for the entire 30 years. Other than an emergency, the only reason I can think of where I would want to make a withdrawal earlier than five years is if the composite interest rate becomes lower than my high interest savings account. All right, so thank you for making it to the end of my video. If you want more insights into my portfolios, or if you want to just support the channel, check out my Patreon. A link is in the video description. And as always, a huge thank you to the awesome patrons that have already joined. And also, be sure to check out my free Discord to talk about stocks, SPACs, Bitcoin, and other investments with other members of the Wolves of Investing community. A link is also in the video description. All right, so let me know what you think about I-bonds. Drop me a line in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on this video before leaving. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.